Over the next few minutes, we're going to take an in-depth look into instant runoff voting, also known as ranked choice voting. We're going to start off with the simplistic approach that's often used to describe this method. We have a race here with Tom and Harry. Now all the polling and conventional wisdom have shown that this race, Harry would have come out on top with Tom getting seven and Harry getting eight out of the 15 votes. But prior to the election, someone else came into the race that shared Harry's views. We'll call him Dick. He pulled off some of the votes that would have gone to Harry. In the final analysis, you had Tom with six, Harry with five, and Dick got four, showing that Tom wins the race even though he was not the original favorite. Inset runoff voting was shown that this would not happen. Now let's take a more visual look at how this works. With instant runoff voting, voters have the ability to rank their choices. They may say, I like Harry best, and I like Dick second, and Tom third. Others may say they like Dick first, Harry second, and Tom third. Others may say they like Tom, then Dick, and then Harry. Then they add up all those votes, find out if there's anybody that has the most votes, if there's not, they take the least votes out and redistribute the second place votes and see if there's a plurality. Let's give a visual representation of how that works. Here's how the voting came out. Those that voted for Tom first might vote for Harry or Dick in second. Those that voted for Harry first would have voted for Dick second, Tom third. And those that voted for Dick first would have voted for Harry second. Let's go ahead and pull those off and see how the final votes were tallied. So here you have it. Tom has six votes, Harry has five votes, and Dick has four. In this particular case, no one has the majority, so you go to the candidate that has the lowest number of votes, and you take their second choice. In this case, it's Harry. Harry now has nine votes, he has the majority, he is the winner. In this simplistic approach, it seems pretty easy. That's not always the case. Now let's take a look at some of the realities of instant runoff voting. I've set up an example here of an election that may happen. We've got four candidates. However, often in municipal elections, you have many more candidates, somewhere upwards to nine candidates. That can be quite cumbersome in an instant runoff voting style election. I've color coded them to make it easier to follow. Let's take a look and see how this election would play out. Let me know if you think it's fair. A couple of things become very apparent here when you look at it this way. You can see that Chuck is very popular, garnering nine first or second place votes, getting 75% of the citizens' votes for first or second place. They go to Chuck. Whereas taking a look at the last rank, or fourth, a lot of blue there, for Michael, he gets six of the 12, or 50%, goes to Michael in last place. So, 75% of the voters chose Chuck for first and second place, 50% chose Michael for last. Let's take a look how instant runoff voting would count these votes and see if this is a fair vote and see if the citizens got a fair shake. We begin by grabbing the first, second, third, and fourth. Putting it back on the first.
And there you have it. Cindy had three ranked number one, Chuck had two, David has three, Michael has four. In instant runoff voting, if no one has a majority, they go to the candidate with the least number of ranked number one, and they throw out their votes, and they look at what the citizen had for the second place, and they redistribute those votes. In this case, These votes go to David. After redistributing the votes, we take a look to see if anybody has a clear majority. There is none, so we go again to the person that has the least number of votes and take a look at what the second place person would be and redistribute them. We throw out the first one, Chuck has already been eliminated, so we throw out this one, and then we redistribute the votes. We've now redistributed the votes that were from Cindy. David has six, Michael has six. It's a tie. We now have to have a runoff election, something that instant runoff voting was supposed to eliminate. Now remember, Michael had 50% of the fourth place votes whereas Chuck had 60% of the first and second place votes. I ask you, was this a fair election? We're gonna run another race, but we're gonna keep something true throughout the whole race. 40% of the voters prefer Cindy over Chuck. 60% prefer Chuck over Cindy. This is gonna stay true throughout the whole race, but what we're going to do is introduce that third candidate. Using instant runoff voting, they were able to select first, second, and third, or who they prefer. Again, we've kept it true that 60% of the people favor Chuck over Cindy. Chuck over Cindy, 25% and 35%. Again, we've introduced a third candidate. 35% of them choose Michael over Chuck, but Chuck is still ahead of Cindy, 35% and 25% of the time, equaling 60%. Cindy is over Chuck here, 40% of the time. Add into the mix one more candidate. But we still have Chuck over Cindy, 60% of the time. Using instant runoff voting, you take a look at who has first, second, and third, and go to the candidate that has the lowest number of first votes. In this case, it would be Chuck. You take off his and go to the second place. In this case, all of his votes, or 25%, would then go to Cindy, who gives her now 65% of the vote. So much for the spoiler effect. 60% of the residents chose Chuck over Cindy, 40% chose Cindy over Chuck. Cindy wins the election using instant runoff voting. When you have a third candidate in there, even though the same truism is there, 60% of the voters preferred Chuck over Cindy. Instant runoff voting purports to do many things, and it can do some, such as shorten the election cycle. But as far as picking the right candidate every single time, we've shown mathematically that that's not always the case. And that's a great concern. As far as reducing the cost of elections, there's many other ways, such as extending the terms for our elected officials and aligning them with the county supervisor's elections. Instant runoff voting is not the way.